All right, welcome back, Steps to Freedom. This is our 10th class, and we're doing Miracle List number 12 on the Miracle List that I put together. If you don't have the Miracle List, be sure to email me at steps to freedom adc at gmail.com. Thanks. All right, so Miracle List number 12. Last week, we talked about um, how Satan controls the mind. Do you remember what the two things were? Lies and fear. Good job. Lies and fears. Yeah. And then Satan's counterattack. If you experience some deliverance, you're gonna, you can bet you're going to get a counterattack within 24 hours. Okay? So you want to be mindful of that. Tonight we're talking about James chapter 4, 7 through 10. Mike calls it this 10-step process. Okay? So... Um, it's number 12 on the miracle list. You want to follow the 10 step process, okay? And I'm going to break it down for you. James 4, uh, chapter 4, 7 through 10, it leads to total healing. It is crucial. Ask someone to help you, okay? Ask someone to help you. Now, I will say this this process, you're not going to just do it once in your life. But you're going to use this process to help you overcome the things that are hindering you, the things that are troubling you, sin that keeps popping up, negative thinking, whatever it is. You're going to use this step, these steps, okay? James 4, 6 says, um, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You are required to humble yourself before God in order for this to work. Okay, here it is, James 4, 7 through 12. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament, mourn, weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. You're feeling down. You're feeling depressed. You need to be lifted up, right? So He said, follow this process, and it'll happen. Number one, submit to God. So what does that mean? Jesus said in John 14, 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the very first step in submitting to God is, you got to make sure you're going to the right God. You can only get to God, the Father in heaven, through Jesus Christ of the Bible. Not Christ consciousness. That's not Jesus Christ. You can't get to God, the Father, through Christ. Christ consciousness. You can't get to God the Father through Buddha, through Hinduism. You can't get there through another Jesus. So make sure that you have the right gospel. There's another gospel. Make sure you know what the Word of God says. Please don't just go off of what your church teaches or what the, the pastor tells you or what the guy on YouTube is saying. Investigate it for yourself. Make sure that you have the right Jesus to get to the right Father. Okay? John 14 says this. Jesus is speaking. Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me the works that I do, he will do also. You should be doing the works that Jesus did. Verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 21 says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Jesus is such a good teacher. We know, as I was taught, I went to Grand Canyon University, the teacher's college, and they taught us, you got to teach it one way, 
and then you got to teach it another way. Okay? Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments, then you love me. Okay? You can't get confused. Verse 23 says, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. There, he just said it a little differently. Yes, commandments, not just the Ten Commandments, but those are very important. Those are very important. There is, uh, I would say, his word, right? All of the Bible is God's word. All scripture is God breathed, and all of it is for our benefit. So he says, if you love me, you keep my word. If you keep my word, then you love me. If you love me, you're going to do what I do. Okay? So you have to examine your life, right? So this is, no, this is how we submit to God. I submit that I'm going to do what you taught me to do. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to, I'm going to be, give kindness and love to people. I'm going to share of the abundance that I have with others. You know, there's all kinds of things, right? He also said, don't worry. Do not worry. Do what he, Jesus, did Jesus ever worry? He never did. No. So, submit to God practically. Accept God's forgiveness. Accept his forgiveness. That might be hard for some of you. Yeah, but you don't know what I did. It doesn't matter. Keep going back to the cross. It's paid for. Accept God's forgiveness. Give up control. Give up control of what? Everything. Look, God cares about the little things and the big things. I've heard it said that, well, well, we got to go to work and we got to give make money and God doesn't expect us to just sit around and let him do everything. This is true. You got to live your life. Absolutely. But stop trying to control people and things and circumstances. Okay? Give up that control. Let God take care of you. He's really good at it. Oh, I went too fast. I'm showing off. My, my slides can go fast now. <laughs> okay, believe the scriptures. I'll let that sit for a second. Believe the scriptures. God says he loves you. Believe it. God says the scriptures say I have a plan for your life. Believe it. He says I desire uh, to give mercy. Believe it. And step out in your faith. So what does that mean? Step out in your faith. Well, you have God's word, right? And maybe there's some things in your life, especially if you've been tracking with us all these weeks. You've forgiven people. You've forgiven yourself. You're catching thought, your thoughts. You're casting down imaginations. You're doing a lot of hard work. You gained knowledge. You've gained wisdom, understanding. And now you look at your life and you say, hmm, I want things to be different. I don't like where I live. I don't like where I work. I don't like the friends that I have. I don't, I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied with this. Okay, make some changes. Pray, trust God, submit to God, right? Submit your plans to him and he will direct your steps. Step out in your faith. James 1.22 says, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You can read the Bible day and night. You can memorize scripture after scripture after scripture, and that's great. But if you never put it into practice, then you're deceiving yourself. So be a doer of the word. Okay, step number two. Well, I'll go faster, I promise. Step number two, James 4, 7a. Therefore, submit to God. Oh, by living. Um, oh, that's a mess up. Okay. 
Submit to God by living your life according to his word. Okay. James 7, James chapter 7, verse 7, uh, James chapter 4, verse 7, the second part of that verse is resist the devil and he will flee from you. Some people think that if I just repeat, submit to God, resist the devil, submit to God, resist the devil, submit to God, resist, that things are going to change. That's not how it works. You have to submit to God. You have to learn God's word. You have to be a doer of his word. Resist the devil. Actually, that word resist, I learned from my mentor, Mike Smith, that it means to be on the offense. He used to be a fighter, an amateur boxer, and resisting the devil is like this. You're resisting him. He comes at you, you want to resist him back. You know, get away from me. You can't be like, devil, leave. No, you have to get a little aggressive sometimes, right? Shut up. Stop talking to me. Then he'll flee from you. I was thinking about this, and some spirits won't leave. Some spirits are like teenagers. They won't move unless you yell at them. Not all, but some of them. If you have teenagers, you know what I'm talking about. They won't do a thing until you get really stern and serious, right? Okay, maybe it was just my home. <laughs> All right. How do we resist the devil? You have to take every thought captive. Take your thoughts captive. Look at them. Examine them. Is this, is this a hopeful thought? Is this at, in faith? Is this a fearful thought? Is this a worry thought? What kind of thought is this? Is this a fantasy thought? you got to examine these things. Take them captive. Resist the devil. you got to cast down imaginations. Like worry. Some people worry about things they have no business worrying about. Let's say, you know, uh, you have a job, you've been there a long time, you're doing well, and you make a mistake or two. And then the person starts to worry. Oh my gosh, what if I lose my job? What if I get fired? Like, dude, you've been there 10 years. You're not going to lose your job. Relax. Don't worry. And even if you did lose your job, don't you think God's got that figured out? He's already got it figured out. Overthinking is one of the ways the devil comes at us. I, I like this. Overthinking. The art of creating problems that weren't even there. You can think your way into problems and thinking it's the devil. But really, it was just you overthinking it. So resist the devil. Cast down imaginations um, like fear, doubt, guilt, worry, independence, pride. Okay? Also, resist the devil in, in these imaginations. You know, fantasizing. There's a lot of fantasy. Disney brought fantasy, right? into our lives as little girls and little boys, fantasy um, about how like marriage should be or how my life should turn out, okay? I think about Bugs Bunny. I, I want to own a mansion and a yacht. My name is Elmer J. Fudd. I own a mansion and a yacht. It, he kept saying it. Remember that cartoon? He kept saying it over and over, like as if to convince himself it was like that prosperity preaching. He was preaching to himself, <laughs> the prosperity message. Um, fantasizing about what it could be, what might happen, oh, the way I want it. And then you're spending all this time. Whoa, you better catch your thoughts and say, wait a second, I'm fantas. No, I don't want to do that. Daydreaming. Okay? It's the same thing. Fantasizing, daydreaming. You have to catch your thoughts and cast down imaginations. As I can guarantee you, whatever you dream up is probably not what God has for you. Now, He gives us thoughts. He does. The Holy Spirit will speak to us and birth a vision within us. And it's different. And it takes, I think, knowing God's Word to know the difference. And experience. Maturity. So resist the devil. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you are living your life according to God's word, 
and you're doing his word, the devil will flee from you. And if he doesn't, get loud. <laughs> get loud and be persistent. Mm -hmm. Number three, step number three is get close to God. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. How do you do that? You pray, talk to God. Pray, pray in English, pray in tongues, pray, talk to him. Talk to him about what you're worried about. Tell him, Lord, I'm really worried about my friend. I'm worried about my, my brother. I'm worried about my sister, Lord. I, one of my favorite prayers is I pray this. I go, Lord, teach me how to pray. Give me the words to pray. Talk to God. Worship. Worship. Many of you are not going to church. And so worship could be a challenge. But you need to do it. Maybe some of you are going through deliverance and you're like, I don't want to listen to anything. I don't, I want to just stay really focused on God. I only want to read the Bible. I don't want to listen to any music. I don't want that kundalini music. I hear people talk about that. You know, don't worry about it. Sing it from your heart. But you need to worship the Lord. Create your own song. Pick a Sunday school song. Sing a hymn. It doesn't matter. If it's from your heart, even if you're singing a song, you know, a Hillsong song. I love some of those music, the old time Hillsong. Even if you're singing that, he's turned my morning into dancing. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And you're singing that, and you're worshiping and praising the Lord. That is how a lot of people get close to God. Some of you get close to the Lord through creating through creative measures, drawing, painting, decorating. This, you do it unto the Lord. Whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. Okay? Serve. Get out there and volunteer. Go help somebody. Give. Give financially. Give your stuff. Give your food. Worship God. Fellowship. Spend time with other believers. Oh, well, they don't believe in deliverance. So what? It's okay. Come together. Agree on what you agree on. Stick with there. Stick with what you agree on. Oh, but they're Catholics. Okay. You know, they still believe in God. They still believe in Jesus. Okay, they got some things that are, you know, not exactly, they're not Presbyterians, but, but they love God and they are good-hearted people. If that's all you got to hang out with, you know, your family or whoever it is, don't avoid them because they're Catholic. You can still fellowship with them. Maybe you don't want to spend a whole lot of time with them, but you want to love them, right? Fellow believers, people that believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. All right? You want to spend time with other believers. You want to listen Get close to God. Draw near to God by listening. Pray and then listen to God. Listen. If your mind is always talking, it's always going, you're not going to hear that still small voice. Meditate. Think about the Word. Think about the Word. Think about it. Memorize a short scripture. One of my favorite scriptures when I was first going through uh, type of deliverance and healing was Jesus wept. It's the shortest verse in the Bible, but very powerful. I was weeping and I remembered Jesus wept. Jesus shed tears. He wept. Maybe he even sobbed. He, he, he related with other people in their sorrow and sadness. He knows how you feel. Number four, cleanse, cleanse your hands, you sinners. This makes me a, a smile when I read this, this verse because it's like, cleanse your hands, you sinners. You know, oh my gosh, you're calling me a sinner. Hey, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourselves as whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. So in thinking about this, you know, we have different parts of us. We have our family life. We have our work life. We have our church life. We have, you know, we have our thought life. 
we have our emotional life, right? You could say these are different parts of a person, you know, or different areas of your life. Examine your faith in these areas. At work, are you patient? Are you kind? Are you living like a Christian? Or are you cussing and lying and cheating? You know, examine yourself in these different areas of your life. At home with your family, do you resemble a Christian? Do you resemble someone who has faith? Okay, so examine yourselves. You want to examine yourself so that you can know, um, you know, what's going on. Then you purify your heart. It says, uh, purify your heart, you double-minded. So if you don't cleanse, if you don't take care of the sin that's within you and purify your heart, you'll go back and forth in what you do and what you believe and in your commitments. You'll be committed one day and not committed the next day. So it says, number 19, this is Ezekiel eleven nineteen 19 says, And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. So I think this purify your hearts means examine, right? You're examining yourself, see what's in there, and then get it out. Whether it's through tears, forgiving yourself, casting out, you got to get it out of there because you have to, um, it's almost like crucifying these parts of your heart that, that are not in the faith, the hardness, you know, the rejection, the part of that rejection that pushes you to always be front and center. You got to examine yourself. You got to look at your life and say, "What? How am I doing? Am I afraid all the time?" That's the stony part, maybe, of your heart, of your mind. Okay, your heart, your mind, and your soul. Right? It's called that the heart. So you got to examine it. Allow God to heal your heart. Tears come up. Let them come out. Let them heal you. Number six. So I took a lot of time, and I even got a friend to help me. There are three things it says. It says lament, mourn, and weep. So I'm breaking it down into three parts. Lament. To lament, we found in the dictionary, means to be regretful. Anybody have regrets? Ever do something, you're like, man, I wish I hadn't done that. I regret that. Well, I think this is what lament is about. Think about what you did or how you still think and regret it strongly. So I was living out of the valley for a couple years. And while I was living out of town, I rented a home here in Phoenix. I sold my home two years ago. Darn it. <laughs> um, now the market has doubled tripled in some cases, right? And I remember about a year ago, um, I was, I got up in the middle of the night and I was thinking about, man, why did I sell my house? I could have been living there right now. It was like 90% remodeled exactly the way I liked it, had the colors I liked. I mean, I had remodeled everything from the baseboards to the windows to the ce ceilings. It was beautiful four bedroom house. And I was re I was I was lamenting. I was like, "Lord, uh, oh. I was being regretful. I was like, "Oh, why did I sell that house? If I would have held on to it, I'd probably make like $100,000 more today. I could have been renting out the rooms. It was exactly the way I wanted it. The carpet only had my dead skin in it, you know? <laughs> I hate other people's carpets, pet peeve. <laughs> anyway, I, it was like I was that night I, and I was crying and I was like, gosh, I'm so sorry, Lord. Why did I do that? I was regretting that decision strongly. You got to do it. 
But don't stop there. You can't stay in regret, okay? And then I mourned the loss. I had to mourn the loss of my four bedroom townhouse in the premier lot right across from the saltwater pool with the big palm trees. Oh, it was beautiful. God bless the lady who bought it. <laughs> it's beautiful. I had to mourn it though. I mourn the loss of it. I think the final step of mourning the loss will be deleting the pictures of it because it, it came out so good. It was such an ugly 1970s property. Everything was 70s. Um, the wallpaper, the carpet, everything. And I remodeled it and it came out beautiful and I have those pictures. Maybe the last step in mourning the loss of that project is getting rid of those pictures. But don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure that's <laughs> quite it. <laughs> I, have to for, I had to forgive myself. I had to forgive myself for selling that property. I, you know, sometimes you have to forgive other people. Now this decision, no one talked me into it, but I certainly have been talked into other decisions that I regretted. You gotta forgive them. Forgive those people and then let it go. I can honestly say, I let it go. I wept. I wept. I allowed myself to get emotional over it. I didn't fight back the tears. I just let them come. Thankfully, it was in the middle of the night. It was me and my cat were hanging out. And I just let it go. And I, I really let it go. I can see forward now. All right, Lord, I don't know what, what's next. And, and there's been a lot of fear, I'll be honest, because our um, economy is crazy. The housing prices are out of this world. They're just astronomical. And I'm thinking, how will I ever be able to afford a home again? And that, that worry will come. It will come. And I'm like, no, the Lord has a plan for me. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I'm going to keep doing my due diligence. I'm going to keep working, keep saving my money. All right. I'm going to plan for, I know it'll happen again. It'll happen again. But I had to let go of that old place. Let go of your regrets. Let go of it. Look, you're probably never going to fit into that wedding dress back 20 years. Let it go. Okay? It's not going to happen. My hair is gray under here. It's, I can only dye it. That's it. I can't, I can't want, I can't get something back that's gone. You can't get it back. So let it go. Number nine, let your laughter be torn to mourning and your joy to gloom. You got to take this seriously. Look, there's a time for everything. Okay, there's a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. Let, when you're going through this process, you gotta, you gotta take it seriously and mourn. Be sorrowful, weep. Okay, everything cannot be a joke. Everything cannot be good. I have people come in my office sometimes, like the lady today, she wanted to talk about all the good things her dad was. I go, we're not here to talk about the good stuff. <laughs> you did not come to counseling today to talk about what's going well in your life. I, I'm grateful that things are go some things are going well in your life, but that's not why we're here. You got to get serious. All right. There's a time for fun and, and uh, celebrating the good. But then you have to go on the other side and take it seriously and look inward. Not look at other people and what they get out of it, but look internally. And number 10, after you've done all of that, bring yourself down a little bit further. Humble yourself even more so. And let the Lord lift you up. By this point, I remember that night when I was lamenting my house and letting it go. Um, I think I was I was probably down on the floor. 
face and and I and it was like the Lord did lift me up he lifted up my he lifted up my head he lifted up my chin he lifted up my body he lifted up my attitude he lifted me up and so whenever we humble ourselves before the Lord and we say Lord I'm so sorry God Look, just this action alone is humbling yourself. Get on your knees. Get on your face. Do it on your bed. I always thought I had to get on my knees on the floor. Look, you can get on your knees on your bed. I love that. A friend showed me that once. It's great. Okay, so that's the 10-step process. Now, I was thinking about what are the blessings that follow this process? Healing, yes. Deliverance, yes. You get to live free. You are free to live the per perfect purpose that God has for you. Freedom. This is steps to freedom. This is what we're talking about, right? It is for, it, it is, uh, you know, for Christ, he set you free. He set you free so that you could live out God's purpose for you. Release, you'll be able to release the bitterness against yourself for that regret. Oh, I never finished school. Oh, I sold that house prematurely. Oh, I didn't, you know, whatever it is. Let that go. Release the bitterness. Release the unforgiveness, a lot of times towards yourself. Another blessing that follows this process is good physical health. A merry heart is nourishment. To the body. After you go through all this weeping and mourning, and then there's dancing and joy. A merry heart is nourishment to the body. There's a lot of sickness in this world, and there doesn't have to be. You do not have to be dying of cancer. You don't have to. You do not have to have skin disease. It's all emotional autoimmune diseases. You do not have to live in that. It's not for you. It's not your portion. Not as a Christian. Not as a child of God. You don't have to live with digestive issues. Again, emotions mess us up. They cause things to stop working. They cause things to work too fast. Godly self-love is another blessing that comes from this. I released that house. <laughs> I released it from my soul, the regret. And now I can, I can feel good. I don't have to say, oh yeah, I had a house and I, darn, I wish I still, no, I don't, I don't even talk like that. No one's ever heard me talk like that because I dealt with it and it's done. <clears throat> it's all done. I can love myself the God's way. I can love myself the way God wants me to love myself. He says, love, love others as you love yourself. If you're not loving others well, then you probably don't love yourself. And you need to go through this process. See yourself as God sees you. Now, that's probably different for everyone. I'll share with you how I think God sees me. I imagine myself as like a little three or four year old with my hands stretched up going like, pick me up. That's what I imagine. That's how God sees me because I'm always like, help me, <laughs> comfort me, love me. Right? And, and I see myself as this little tiny girl to remind myself God always wants to pick me up. God always wants to help me. God always wants to cuddle and kiss me. He always wants to love on me. Who can resist a little three or four year old who's reaching up at them? No one can. And I'll tell you what, God can't resist you either. So go to him. All right. Reminders, Wednesday night, some of you get on Zoom. That's great. Um, if you have not been on Rick Cott's Zoom yet, 
on Wednesday nights, it's tomorrow night, Wednesday night, get on there. Um, you can email him at stepsofdeliverance at gmail.com and he'll send you the link. And then it's the same link every week, it's every Wednesday night. They start at 6 p.m. Or you can go on the Facebook page, Steps of Deliverance. Also, this class is going to start again Tuesday, August 2nd. And it'll be every Tuesday. We'll start at 6.30. This seems to be a good time for people getting out of work. To register, you're going to email me. My name is Julie. Steps to Freedom, ADC at gmail.com. Tell a friend, please share this video too. A lot of people have been sharing. A lot of people have been watching, clicking. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for your emails. I appreciate them, the encouragement. And lastly, come to the Arizona Deliverance Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Email Mike at hardcorechristianity.com and make it a reservation or make an appointment and get one-on-one -on -one counseling. It's free. It's free. Everything we do here is free. So, thank you. It was great.